Welcome to Nutrition 101, The Basics. Today we're going to talk about carbohydrates, protein, fat, vitamins, minerals, sodium, alcohol, and water. Uh, another thing I just want to mention before we get started is the difference between a registered dietitian and nutritionist. Uh, so in the state of Maine, nutritionist is not a protected term. Uh, so anyone can call themselves a nutritionist. Uh, as for a registered dietitian, we have um, a bachelor's degree. Many of us have a, ma a master's degree. We also complete an uh, internship, and then we do a national exam as well. We need to keep up on continu continuing education, of course, and that is um, tracked through the state as well as federally. So just an overview of our session today. We'll talk about what is nutrition, where do calories come from, macronutrients, micronutrients, water, alcohol, goal setting. Uh, just some questions to think about as we go along. What does nutrition mean to you? Also, what does diet mean to you? Uh, certainly these are two words that I hear lots of questions uh, on a daily basis. So just kind of thinking about what do they mean to you. So what is nutrition? Is it simply knowing an apple is more nutritious than a brownie? Is it eating bland, tasteless foods? Is it a way to satisfy hunger? So what is nutrition? So the definition I like to use is it is providing the proper nourishment of nutrients to your body, allowing for proper growth and development. So this slide is showing us MyPlate, a great website here called forchoosemyplate.gov. So you certainly recommend checking that out. Uh, MyPlate is a good starting point, certainly for someone trying to get their maybe their nutrition back on track. Uh, there's other options out there as well. If you're a vegetarian or vegan, there's pyramids specifically for those eating patterns. There's a Mediterranean diet pyramid. And also Harvard Public Health has issued their own plate. So again, this is a great starting point, but there's certainly other options out there for healthy eating patterns. So what's in our foods? So these are our macronutrients that I spoke of earlier. Uh, we have carbohydrates, which are 4 calories per gram. Protein, 4 calories per gram. Fat, 9 calories per gram. And alcohol, 7 calories per gram. So you can certainly see how fat and alcohol add up much quicker than our carbohydrates and protein. So what is a calorie? Uh, a calorie is a unit of energy. So specifically, it actually means uh, the amount of energy required to raise 1 kilogram of water by 1 degree Celsius. Uh, so of course, when they're determining calories, this is often done in a lab. Um, in nutrition and everyday language, however, calories refer to the energy consumption through eating and drinking and energy usage through physical activity. So for example, an apple may have 80 calories, while a one-mile walk may use up to about 100 calories. Carbohydrates. Uh, current recommendations are 50 to 60 percent of our calories are to come from carbohydrates each day. Um, the purpose, of course, is to provide our body with energy. They are the body's preferred energy source. Uh, for instance, our brain only uses carbohydrates for energy, so a lot of times if someone's following a low-carbohydrate diet, specifically those first couple of weeks when the carbs are very low, uh, typically people report a foggy thinking. And this is, again, because the body's not getting enough carbohydrates, and that's the brain's only source of energy. Uh, for types of carbohydrates, we have simple and complex, which we'll talk about on the next couple of slides. So on this slide, you can see carbohydrates. So of course, we have things like bread, cereals, grain products, crackers, a lot of our snack foods, dried beans, peas, lentils, uh, fruits, milk and yogurt, sweets, desserts, and regular soda, as well as vegetables. Uh, a lot of times I hear surprise, people are surprised that vegetables are on this list, but they are indeed a carbohydrate. Uh, but certainly looking at things that are simple carbohydrates, for instance, we have fruit would fall into that category, as well as a piece of cake. Uh, however, we know there's a lot of differences between those two foods. Certainly the fruit is giving us some vitamins and minerals, lower in calories, virtually no fat in fruit, um, and then looking at fiber. So of course we're always recommending people get more fiber, and that's something that we do get from, from fruit. So just looking at that in comparison to a piece of cake. So simple carbohydrates, those are the ones that are broke down easily in the body, provide that quick energy. Some of these are what we want to focus on. We certainly want more fruits and vegetables in our diets. Uh, certainly the carbohydrate that we get from milk products is, is a good source of carbohydrates. Uh, it's the cakes, candies, those refined sugar products, um, regular soda. 
that can contribute to weight gain, interfere with weight loss, and promote diabetes and heart disease. So certainly those are the ones we want to limit while focusing on trying to our, increase our fruits and vegetables, uh, aiming for five a day. So if you're currently at one, you might say, hey, I'm going to try to increase that to three servings a day of fruits and vegetables and gradually work on increasing that up to the recommendation of at least five a day. Complex carbs. So we've touched on sugar a bit. Uh, so what are the three components that make up carbohydrates? So the first one is sugar. Second one would be starch. Uh, and then we have fiber. So what about whole grain or wheat products? So certainly this is something that we may need to investigate further. If you see a, a bread, for instance, that says uh, wheat bread on the label, you may need to dig a little deeper to see if it's actually a whole grain. So sometimes we need to look at on the ingredient list, we need to see the word whole in the ingredient list to actually confirm that it's a whole grain product. Uh, multigrain is another word that's out there on labels. Um, it just means more than one grain, so they could all be refined grains. So again, looking for that word whole should be your first ingredient, uh, and that's just confirming that it is actually a whole grain product and not a refined wheat product. Protein. So protein's purpose is to promote muscle and connective tissue growth, uh, contributes to formation of antibodies to strengthen our immune system, and it's the foundation for hormones, enzymes, and blood cells. So protein is found in meats, poultry, fish, beans and peas, tofu, soy, eggs, nuts and seeds, and milk and dairy products. So just some protein tips, uh, looking at choosing leaner meats for our protein. So with poultry, looking at the white meat, uh, skinless, boneless. Uh, for red meats, certainly going with a sirloin or a round for a steak. Um, red meats really not recommended any more than twice a week, certainly including um, for ground meats, going with the leanest ground meats that you can find. Um, pork tenderloin is another lean meat. Uh, it's as lean as a, as a chicken breast, so that's another option. Uh, eating fish twice a week, so trying to get fish in at least twice a week is the current recommendation. Um, including protein at each meal to curb feelings of hunger, so it doesn't necessarily need to be meat at each meal, so keeping in mind other sources of protein with that. Uh, and also keeping in mind the portion size, so of course it's not that 28 ounce steak that we see on menus, uh, it's about the size of a deck of cards. And then again, thinking about meatless meals at least once a week. So fat is our next macronutrient we'll look at. Uh, current recommendation, 20 to 30% of calories each day coming from fat. Uh, the purpose is it's essential for absorption of our fat-soluble vitamins, protects our body organs, and then we want to look at the type of fat. We want to focus on those unsaturated fats such as poly, mono, omega-3, uh, and while limiting saturated and trans fats. Saturated fats. So these fats are solid at room temperature. It's that white visible fat found in meats and poultry. Eggs contain some saturated fat. Dairy products contain, contain saturated fats. So certainly our, any milk products that have fat in it, it is a saturated fat. Yogurt, butter, cream, hard cheeses, and our coconut and palm oils are also saturated fats. Unsaturated fats, so these are our better fats. This is the source of fats that we really want to focus on. Uh, these tend to be liquid at room temperature. Examples include oils, our olive oil, canola oil, safflower, safflower oil, so any of those oils. Seeds and nuts are nut butters, fish oils, uh, and avocado and olives. Trans fats, so trans fats are the fats we really want to avoid. Um, they are something that was developed in the 1950s to get away from saturated fats. Uh, it's a man-made fat, uh, really used to increase that shelf life of products, uh, particularly great uh, baked goods like Twinkies. For instance, that Twinkie went from sitting on the shelf uh, for three days and to 30. So you can certainly see if it's doing that to a baked good product on the shelf, what is it doing in our body? Uh, so really limiting those trans fats um, some trans fat is naturally occurring, so there is a little bit in dairy products in meat, and that does not have the, the same health effects that uh, the man-made trans fat has. 
vitamins. So our vitamins fall into two categories, fat soluble and water soluble. Fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, those can build up in the body uh, and they're stored in the fat in our body. Uh, we also need fat to absorb those vitamins. Water soluble vitamins, C and the B complex vitamins, our body can't store these vitamins. So we need vitamin C and the B complex each day. Minerals. Uh, so vitamins are organic substances made by plants or animals. Minerals are inorganic elements that come from the soil and water and are absorbed by plants or eaten by animals. Uh, our major minerals include sodium, which we'll talk about in more detail, chloride, potassium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus. So we need larger amounts of these minerals to stay healthy. Uh, other minerals like chromium, copper, iodine, iron, selenium, zinc are called trace min min minerals because we only need a very small amount of them each day. Salt, also known as sodium chloride, is about 40% sodium and 60% chloride. It adds flavor to food. It's also used as a preservative, binder, and stabilizer. Uh, the human body needs a very small amount of sodium. We actually need around 500 milligrams a day. Um, which is the primary element we get from salt, of course. Uh, and we need that to conduct nerve impulses, contract and relax muscles, and maintain the proper balance of water and minerals. But too much sodium in the diet can lead to high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. Given that the majority of U.S. adults are at risk for developing health problems related to salt consumption, nutrition experts at the Harvard School of Public Health, the American Heart Association, and the Center for Science and the Public Interest have called for the U.S. government to lower the upper limit of daily recommended sodium intake from 2,300 milligrams to 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams per day. Uh, currently, the average American is consuming around 3,500 milligrams a day, so you can see it's quite a bit more than what's recommended, and really trying to stick to that 1,500 to 2,000 is, is what's recommended. Um, the majority of that comes from processed foods. It's not from what we add. It's just hidden in so many foods. It's added to increase that shelf life. So again, just looking at that nutrition label and looking at the sodium especially in things like bread, cheese, chicken, things that we don't normally think of as being salty, besides those typical things we think of, such as deli meats or canned products. Uh, so just get in the habit of checking that sodium out on that nutrition label and try to stick for your day between 1,500 and 2,000 milligrams. So the next thing we're going to talk about is water. So most of our fluid that we consume each day should be water. How much is that? We often hear, oh, eight cups uh, a day, 64 ounces. So that's a really good starting point. Uh, that might be exactly what you need. However, our hydration needs do vary depending on our activity level, our age, our height, our weight, our gender. So there's a lot of factors in there. So the 64 ounces is just kind of a general starting point. Uh, quick and easy way to tell if you should be drinking more is actually the color of your urine. If it looks like apple juice, you're dehydrated. You want it to be almost clear. So again, just quick and easy way to check if you need to be drinking more. So alcohol. So this is always a, a popular topic. Uh, main message though, if you don't drink, don't start. Next question is what is moderation? So thinking about moderation, what is that for alcohol? Uh, it's easy to say moderation, but maybe to someone that's two bottles of wine, maybe to someone else it's a glass. So Moderation is, is a word to use carefully, uh, but thinking about alcohol, what moderation refers to is, is the amount, of course, and serving is typically one bottle of beer, one and a half ounces of hard liquor, or five ounces of wine. Women, recommendation is currently, of course, no drinks a day to one. Uh, men, on the other hand, always get a little more, so it tends to be no drinks, again, to two drinks a day. Uh, can I save it all for Saturday night? That's always a popular question. Unfortunately, no. Uh, once you go over those re recommendations of one to two drinks a day, you negate any health benefits and it actually is detrimental to your health. Uh, and always keeping in mind that it is extra calories. We looked earlier, alcohol is seven calories a gram. And also if you're mixing it with something, you know, what are you mixing it with? Orange juice, um, regular soda. So those are also adding extra calories. So just keeping that in mind. So the last thing I always like to touch on in, in most of my presentations is talking about goal setting. So really kind of just thinking I'm just going to work on changing one or two things at a time. I certainly see folks all the time that try to change maybe 10 things. Really trying to hone that down and just go for one or two things. 
Um, maybe it's walking. And again, you don't want to set yourself up for failure. You want to think about potential barriers. So maybe it's something as simple as saying, I will walk three times a week with my friend in my neighborhood for 25 minutes each time, and we'll do this after work. So just being really specific. So using that smart goal setting technique, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. And when you meet your goal, reward yourself. Certainly we all want to do something nice, so certainly reward yourself, just not with food. Uh, and thank you for listening today.